What would it take to develop an incredible inside out forehand? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you all the steps that you need to focus on to develop that inside out forehand. This is Jeff Salzenstein, founder of Tennis Evolution, former top 100 ATP pro, and I'm here to break it all down for you. I don't care if you're a pro, if you're a committed, passionate adult player or a beginner, we're going to show you the steps that you can focus on to develop this all important shot. Now, first of all, to start out with the inside out forehand, you have to be willing to hit it. You have to be willing to move around your backhand to hit a forehand. So the inside out forehand basically involves you learning to move around your backhand to hit the forehand to the opposite side of the court. This is one of the most devastating shots in pro tennis and not everyone should use it because if you have a good backhand, if your backhand's better than your forehand, you don't need to be running around your backhand much. But if you have a strong forehand and you wanna keep developing it, you have to do what I, you have to become what I call a forehand hunter. One of my clients has a better forehand than backhand and that's one of his buzzwords, the forehand hunter. He just hunts for forehands and it really gets him in the right mindset. So number one, you have to be willing to move around your backhand to hit that forehand inside out. Let's talk about core position. The more that you move inside the court, the more that the swing path is going to go across the body. But if you're a few feet behind the baseline, you wanna make sure that you finish higher. Okay, you don't want to pull across the body like this. That's a big distinction and a big key. Yes, you can finish over your shoulder inside the court as well, but I found that if you're swinging and accelerating, swinging across the body when you're inside the court is better, and when you're behind the baseline, you wanna swing and go over the shoulder. Now, the further you move back in the court, the less you actually wanna run around your backhand. If you're deep in the court, you do wanna hit a backhand most of the time as you're moving back. So I think the range for using this inside out forehand is, is about two feet behind the baseline. If you're in here, this is when you can still hit the inside out. As Soon as you start moving back, then you wanna start hitting the backhand. I, I had a student uh, playing last year, I was watching a video of her match playing at the college level and she was running around backhands to hit forehands back here. And that's just not the right shot selection. So a little bonus shot selection tip for you today. Now, let's talk about what I like to focus on with the inside out forehand. First of all, it's targets. Once you understand where to hit it in the court, we have to get the targets dialed in. So I want you to imagine that you're hitting to the other side of the net. Most players aim with their inside out forehand over here. And guess what? They miss wide. I've been guilty of it many times before. I've, mi I've missed so many inside out forehands wide because I tried to squeeze the line. I tried to squeeze the sideline, play it too close. So what do I do to offset that? I give myself big targets. Look at my target here. Imagine I'm on the other side hitting an inside out and I am aiming through the middle of the court. So this, this cone is almost, it's about a foot from the middle. This is my target for my inside out. Can you believe it? It's so safe. Now what happens when I actually hit an inside out and I aim here? The ball actually starts to land right here. It's an amazing phenomenon and I haven't seen coaches talk about it, but this is so, so important to get your target safer. Let me take you up to the net real quick. The more that you move around a backhand to hit a forehand, the more that you have to hit over the center strap. So your inside out forehand actually should be aimed over the center strap. In fact, the more that you move towards your backhand, you're actually gonna aim on this side of the center strap to hit it inside out. It's an illusion. Many players are aiming on this side and they're missing their forehand wide. So your center strap on the inside out forehand is your friend. This is another reason why we have to focus on playing through the middle of the court more than we think. We don't have to play the ball so close to the sidelines. If you track that ball going over the net on an inside out, if it's done correctly, it's hit very close to the center strap. So you can hit a lot of your shots over the center part of the court, over the center net, you know, over the middle part of the net. Okay, so we've covered the court position. We've covered a little bit of strategy on when to use it. We've covered the targets. 
Now we have to get into swing path here. So I like the inside out to be hit flatter. I don't like a lot of spin. I like the ball to go through the court, even have a little bit of side spin on it. I know, especially, it's a little crazy. Some people always talk about getting the outside of the ball, not on the inside out. Especially if it's a high ball, you wanna, get, you wanna make sure that you get a little bit of the inside of the ball and hit it flatter. So as I move around this ball, notice how I'm finishing high on that. I really wanna drive through it. Now, of course, Roger Federer, he finishes a lot by his shoulder, and you can do that too. I've just found that when players swing across, if they don't have full command of this shot, they start spraying the forehand. So I like a drive, I like the high drive finish on the inside out, and you just hit it straight through the court. You're not gonna pull off of it. The ball's gonna go through the court like a laser, and it's gonna be consistent. As soon as you start swinging, like this, that's when the ball can go in the net more often and it doesn't feel as good. Just from my years of teaching, what I've experienced, we wanna get through the ball and we wanna finish high and over the shoulder. The more we move in, the more we get the ball to go up and down. I'll show you that right now. So if I move into the court for an inside out, then I can spin it more. But if I'm on or just behind the baseline, then I'm gonna finish higher and go through the court. It's a very big concept that I teach as it relates to the finish. Not everyone's gonna teach this. Some people aren't gonna like this concept. I've just seen the, the consistency go way up when someone has a clear finish on their shots, particularly the inside out forehand. Okay, let's talk about movement now. So when you're moving around this forehand, I feel it's very important to keep the hips facing the net as much as possible. So as you're moving around this ball, okay, you're keeping your hips facing the net more. You're using your offhand to, to pull the racket across and create that shoulder turn, but the hips stay in this position. Too often, players at different levels actually, they drop this back foot and they come around like this and, they, and they're basically facing in their target line. I've actually seen online coaches teach this, other online coaches when I've studied their lessons and I just don't think that's the way to do it. When you get around the ball, you want your hips in this position, you wanna be in your semi-open semi stance, okay? You don't wanna drop this leg, turn sideways and try to line up. Okay, you wanna keep the stance the same whether you're hitting inside out or inside in. Now, if you drop this back leg, most of you are gonna turn your hips. Nadal is, at, is able to drop his back leg and then keep the hips facing more. So what I suggest that you do is that you bring this leg in front with the first move. It automatically sets the hips on the first move facing the net. If that's awkward, just shuffle out as quickly and with the best rhythm that you can. So let me show you two versions here. The first, I'm gonna move initially with this foot in front, and then I'm gonna shuffle a few times, okay? This is one way you can do it. Okay, so you notice that first move I made with the inside foot going in front of the outside foot. The other way is to simply shuffle with the first move. Shuffle. <sighs> And so one big key to understand when you're moving around this ball is you wanna create almost like a circular motion around the ball and create space. You don't want to run into the ball and get jammed. So as you're moving around, try to create a little bit of a circle. Create that space away from the ball, lots of space. Look at the space with the arm. A lot of people move like this. You wanna create that space. Okay, so let's review this on the inside out forehand. First of all is make sure that you're using the inside out when you're on the baseline, slightly inside the baseline. You can be a foot or two behind the baseline. As soon as we get back in here, you're hitting a backhand. So we gotta get that court positioning down. We gotta get our targets down. Aim to the right target, hit the ball over the center strap. Play it safer through the middle. You're naturally going to catch the inside of the ball when you do that and the ball is going to go inside out. Focus on the correct swing path. I like a flatter swing, a little more low to high over the shoulder. The more you move inside the baseline, 
the more you can turn the hand and finish lower and get the ball up and down. But typically we're on the baseline slightly, on the baseline or slightly behind, we're finishing high. And then with the footwork, let's move around the ball in that circular fashion, creating space with the hips facing the net more as you turn the shoulders. So hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. We packed a lot of content in here for the inside out forehand. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you enjoyed this lesson, make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on so you can hear about the next lessons that we're gonna be releasing. You'll get updated on those. Make sure that you give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate all the support and feel free to share this video. We want more people to learn about what we're doing at Tennis Evolution. We're passionate about helping you guys. And if you want more free tips, you can click somewhere in this video or click the link in the description below. These lessons will take your game to the next level. I'm committed to helping you. Thanks for your time today. We'll see you at the next one.